Now, if you make delicious salads, it's a really good way so that you can eat a lot of raw vegetables. So I want to share some salad combinations with you and also some salad dressings. Now the dressings, uh, the salads, you know, you don't have to do the same kinds of fruits and vegetables all the time. You don't have to do the same, I mean, you don't have to do the same vegetables all the time. There is a lot that we can learn from many different um, countries around the world. So, even from Thailand, and I think maybe even here, do you have the raw papaya salad? Yes. Yeah, you like it, but it's usually very spicy, right? Okay, so we're going to make it, but we're going to make it not spicy. Actually, it's very easy, the... Um, Green papaya shredded. And uh, you just add some uh, lime juice and salt. That's pretty much the basic. And you can add some, uh, some cooked garlic. But now, just like you do the uh, green papaya salad, you can also make it like a carrot salad. And you just add the same things, just shred the carrot and add lime juice, salt, cooked garlic. Right? Uh, now, we have a lot of, of um, uh, cabbage. So you can use shredded green cabbage as the base for your salad. And you can add a little bit of um, purple cabbage shredded. So mostly green cabbage, a little bit of purple cabbage, and a little bit of shredded carrots for color. Uh, you can also add uh, cilantro. And if you add roasted peanuts uh, that are crushed. And with a dressing, you can add lime juice. A little bit of honey. And salt. This is really good. Nice salad. You can also use other kinds of dressings with this salad. You can make a peanut dressing. I would blend the peanuts together with some water, some lime juice, some honey, and salt. And you, make, you put enough water so that the consistency is like a dressing. And you add that to this, it's very delicious. And another kind of dressing you can use is a pineapple dressing. Even just taking pineapple and a little bit of salt and blending it makes a delicious dressing. Okay, another salad combination you can use is Lettuce, tomato, oops, lettuce, uh, plus onion, 
So lettuce, lettuce, tomato, and onion soaked, uh, onion soaked in lime juice. Okay, and what can make this delicious is adding some avocado pieces. Ah, do you mind? Listen, top of the, no, top of the, the the little, top of the little, the 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 little, the pain salad, the little, the yellow, the yellow, the yellow, the yellow. And if you like cilantro, you add cilantro. Really good. Yeah, um, And with the same uh, salad base, you can add any of the different dressings, whatever dressing you like. Okay. And the next salad combination is simply round cucumber thin cucumber slices. Plus almond slices. Almonds. Almond, the nuts. You know what almonds are? If you don't have almond spices, if you don't have it, you can use something else. You can use peanuts or cashews or whatever, but it's really nice with almonds. So the, what you do is you cut the cucumber slices very thin and then you put salt in it and let it sit for about 15 minutes. Because when you put salt in the cucumber, it causes the water to come out. So we want the water to drain out before we add, add other flavorings. Otherwise, it will dilute the whole flavor of the salad. Okay. So after you let it soak, then you drain out the water. Then you can add um, a little bit of lime and honey. And that makes a delicious, simple salad. Okay, the next salad combination has a base of tomatoes. And so the very most, most basic uh, tomato salad is tomato plus onion soaked in lime. Okay, and then if you just add salt, you can just eat that as a very simple salad. Then you can start adding to this, right? So then you can add this, let's use this as a base. Uh, you can add cucumber. And then, or you can add avocado. You can add cilantro. Or coriander, what do you guys call it? Oh. Coriander, okay. Coriander. So you can add one of them, or two of them, or three of them, you know? So this is a really, it's a good go-to salad that I love to make. You can also change the ratio, and instead of making it a tomato-based salad, make it a cucumber-based salad. Then maybe you have mostly cucumbers and just a little bit of tomatoes and onions. Okay. In all, any of these salads, you can add avocado, you can add cashew nuts, peanuts, almonds, and that will make it delicious. And 
You can use sprouts also to make different salads. Uh, um, sprouts with lettuce, sprouts with cabbage. Uh, you can do whatever, you know, inspires you. Okay, another type of a salad is using shredded beetroot. Shredded beetroot with shredded carrots. And just using lime juice, honey, and salt. Now, the nutrition contained in the beetroots is very dense, so you don't have to do a lot. You know, so the salad that we eat that's maybe uh, lettuce-based, we might eat this much salad, but if we eat a beetroot-based salad, maybe we'll eat less than half the amount. Sometimes we give raw beetroot sticks as our raw element of the meal. And we'll just maybe give two sticks, that's it. It's nutrient dense. Now you can do the same thing and then add um, shredded radish. Make sure it's not spicy though. Okay, then I really like pineapple-based salads. Uh, in this country, do you guys have hickama? It's a white root. The inside is white, but the outside is a little bit light brown. It's kind of like a radish, but it's sweet and starchy. You have something like that? But it's not spicy. Is it? Is that what you're thinking of? It's a white root. White, the inside, the flesh is white, and it's like, it looks like a turnip, like a round, like a turnip. But it's sweet. You have that? Oh, so good. Okay, so just pineapple with that. I, I, I call it uh, hickama. In America, we call it hickama. And, um, oh, so good. So pineapple and hickama. And then I like to put a little bit of cilantro, the, of coriander in there. And I will use um, uh, roasted peanuts. And then just do a little bit of lime and honey and salt. Oh, I wish we could make that. Maybe our cooks can be inspired to, to make this one. And um, you can taste it. It's really nice. It's very fresh and delicious. Okay, so here are some ideas for your salads. And, um, but this, these are not limited, so you can make up any kind of salad, salad combinations that taste good. Okay, now we're going to talk about salad dressing. The most basic salad dressing is simply lime and salt. And then as you have noticed, I use honey for my sweetener. So lime, honey, and salt. And I already told you about pineapple and salt. Grind it, uh, blend it. Blend it. You don't have to add water because there's plenty of juice in there. Uh, you can also use the pineapple as a base. 
And you can add roasted sesame seeds. Or, or roasted peanuts. And salt. And then blend it. It'll give it a little nutty flavor. Do you guys use soy sauce in this country? Yes, of course. Okay. The problem with soy sauce is that it's fermented. So if you have an unfermented type of soy sauce, that is the healthy version to use. In America, there's something called Bragg's. Bragg's liquid aminos. I did see it in the marketplace uh, supermarket, but it's very, very expensive. But if you love the taste of soy sauce, maybe it's something to invest in. So if you want to have an Asian f- Asian flavor dressing, I would do this some kind of unfermented soy sauce. Together with honey and lime. And maybe I would cook some garlic and crush it and put it together. Okay. Next, if we want creamy sauces, we can use bases such as peanuts, roasted peanuts. So peanuts, water, unfermented soy sauce, and lime makes a nice dressing. Uh, do you guys ever eat the fresh spring rolls? Spring roll, uh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's such a nice way to eat a lot of fresh vegetables. You roll it up, and if you make a sauce like this, oh, it's delicious to dip in. And that can even be your meal. Okay, another, another creamy sauce, you can use cashews as a base. Use raw cashews and water and salt, and that's your most basic cashew dressing. And in fact, you can use this for salads, but you can also use this in your cooking, your cooked vegetables. So, having a good blender to blend that together, it will make it creamy. And after this, this is basic, and then after that, you can add other things. You can add cooked garlic. I don't know, I can't think of anything right now, but you, you can add other things to that base. So also, if you have like soy milk that's not sweet, you can use that as a base for making some kind of creamy dressing. Okay, there are many different options. Um, people have told me all different kinds of things that they use to make dressings. Some people use... Tomato, raw tomato based dressings. Uh, some people make pumpkin, cooked pumpkin based dressings. Some people even told me they made a sweet cooked cooked sweet potato based dressing. And an avocado-based dressing is very nice. 
Take avocados, put a little bit of lime, honey, and salt. Um, maybe, maybe put a little bit of water or soy milk in there and blend it up. And that can be your dressing for your salad. Yeah. So here are some, uh, some suggestions for you. Um, I really like to add like coriander or do you guys have dill here? Dill. dill or basil? No, no. Vale. Do you know what dill is? Dillweed? Oh, it's a really nice herb. It's green and um, has a nice flavor, but different flavor. Do you but know what I said about dill? Dill. Huh? Huh? mint. Pusina mint. Dill. It's not mint. Deal, deal. Anyway, so you know there are many different herbs that have different uh, uh, flavors. So you can anyway you can blend it together with any of these combinations, and if it tastes nice, you try it, and you teach me next time. Okay, uh, how many of you like Italian food? Okay, Italian is very good. <laughs> okay, so um, have you heard of pesto sauce? Pesto sauce. Yeah, when, you make, um, when you make pasta or even on pizza, sometimes they'll use a pesto sauce. Are the the if you can get fresh basil and you have olive oil and you have some roasted sesame seeds uh, a few walnuts and salt if you blend that together, this takes quite a bit of olive oil, so it is a, you know, we all only use little bits of it. But it's very delicious. So we can use it as like a spread on bread, or if you're making pasta, you cook your pasta and then you mix it together with it. It's very delicious. Okay. So that's it for the salads and salad dressings. And I want to see if any of you have any questions uh, from the last few days. We have given you the questions. The questions. Uh, the questions that you I gave me. The first question is how about uh, how to feed the old people without teeth? Okay. Okay, people, old people without teeth or who are missing teeth, um, of course you can give them the soft foods, but what you can also do is you can cook your foods. What well, the same foods that you're cooking, and you just blend it together. It's still the whole food, because they're eating the whole thing. It's just ground up so that it's easier for them to eat. Okay. The other question is, uh, can we eat seaweed? And what kind of seaweed? Yeah, seaweed, um, it's no problem. And what kind? I don't know. Whatever kind you have here, I think, is okay. You know, the Korean seaweed that you buy usually has a, a lot of oil and salt. So it's, it's better to get the one that is the, um, the paper for the rolling of kimbap. 
And then you just roast it yourself. Ready made roasted, if there's no oil, then maybe it's okay. No, how can we preach the gospel to the Buddhist uh, patients? You know, uh, how can we preach the intro, gospel to the to Buddhist questions? This is a question for Mrs. Choi because she is the expert. Mm. So I actually asked her to talk about it tomorrow. ไงอ่ะสิสิตောက်มั้ยนายเวบีไงอ่ะสิสิตောက်มั้ยปี้รอมามะเนสสาสาปี้รอ what did you say? Hmm? Uh, the water drinking style. Just explain. You told them. Yeah. Okay. How about? Yeah, hold on. I want to. I want to go back to the question about how to um, tell the Buddhists um, how to evangelize the Buddhists. I'll give you an experience that I had with Mrs. Choi in Thailand. We went to do a seminar at the uh, Adventist school in Moklek, International Adventist School. It was not at AIU, it was actually at Ames, at the uh, elementary school Sorry, to high school. University the Academy High School And one of the um, students and her mother, they uh, they got some kind of autoimmune disease. So the principal asked if they can come for a consultation with Mrs. Choi. And they were Buddhist believers. And this is what Mrs. Choi said to them. She said, The Creator, the one who made you, is the only one who can heal you. But the God that made, but the God that you worship, is not the Creator. And that's the reason why He cannot heal you. But it's okay because you didn't know better before. Do you want to learn about the Creator who made you? Do you want to allow him to heal your body? I want you to read this book and watch these lectures and find out how to become healed. Mrs. Choi can say with confidence, because she believes in the Creator God. But also through all these years, she has seen God heal people if they will but believe in Him. So then we do not have to hide God. Our God is the only living God. Other gods are made by humans. And what is made cannot 
make or create or heal. So as we experience the Creator God, who is a living God, then we can introduce our living God to other people. Any other questions? Oh, what were you saying? Uh, as uh, the four liter of water for her is the enough? Four liters four is liters. too much. Too much. ไม่ไหนวัตถุไหนวัตถุตอไม่รู้ไม่สู้รู้ไอ้ดิฉันน่ะมาตะลีดาเปียเอานะคะคว้นตอกเลยตะบ่ตะชั่วเป่นเนา
Is this safe to drink rain water and the ponds water, especially especially for the those are living in the village? We can get a mineral water here, but for them, it's only rain water and the pond water. You, water. you can't get um, well water yeah, from the ground. You can get the well yeah. water. Well water is better than pond water or rain water. Because as the water goes, the rain goes down through the the ground. It's like a natural fil- filtration system. But still, if you have some kind of filtration system, it would be good to use it for any of the water. But when you don't have that option, you can boil the water. Cool it down before you drink. Okay. Okay, uh, according to LNG, why two meals per day is better than three meals per day? So, if we eat two meals per day, how can we set the time? Okay, eating two meals a day is good, especially for people who are not working outdoors. So, people who are doing office work, who are not moving much during the day. I heard that people in Myanmar eat two meals a day, but they eat around 7 o'clock and then 5 p.m. It would probably be better to eat around 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock based upon your schedule, and then again around 3 p.m. So the longer period of time that your stomach is empty, then your body is able to um, benefit from the effects of fasting. But remember always, eat the heavier meal in the morning and the lighter meal in the evening or afternoon. So, for when we eat three meals, this is the principle. For breakfast, eat like a king. For lunch, eat like a prince. And for dinner, eat like a pauper, a poor person. So actually, the way that we're eating here, we're eating breakfast, lunch, and fruit for dinner, that's like eating two meals. So the, the fruit is so light and it digests within one or two hours, and so it's almost as if you are not eating that as a meal. But a lot of it has to do with habit. When your stomach is trained to eat at a certain time, this is very good for your body. So at the right time, then your body starts, your stomach starts producing the stomach acids to prepare to digest the food. But when you miss a meal, then you get so hungry and then at the next meal you overeat. So it's much better to keep the regular meal times. Okay, so time is, is running away from us, so I'm going to stop here. If you have questions, just feel, feel free to um, ask somebody to translate and then just come and ask me questions whenever I'm free.